It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we'll play host to a battle between conferences. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Denver Broncos on Sunday night. Thank you. On a cold night at the foot of the Rockies, EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to Empower Field at Mile High in Denver, Colorado. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup on tap as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Denver Broncos. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, such a great quarterbacking tradition here in the Mile High City. It continues with the presence now of Russell Wilson. What's your outlook of year two? Cautiously optimistic because Russell Wilson, a down year last year, but he's been so great throughout his career, you expect him to get back to those heights. Pair him with Sean Payton, the new head coach. Put those two minds together, and I'm expecting Denver to be much improved. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. And off we go from Denver. And we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff. This will be a touchback. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be led out by a seventh-year pro and a literal rocket scientist. Here's Joshua Dobbs. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. On play action, it's Dobbs. Into the hands of the rookie Jordan Addison. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards, the final tally. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Out of the gun, Dobbs. And that one too wide. And incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Here's second and ten. Here's Dobbs to throw. Open man is Osborne. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing here, Dobbs. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 37. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And he's brought down at the 19 after a gain of 19. First down in the red zone. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, 
you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now they show jet sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Baron Browning, the one who brought him down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10. Back to throw Dobbs. Slant route, and he's got Addison. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it brings up third and five now. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. And now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams marching right to the goal line and not cash in, they got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. Now that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. Madison. Is in. Touchdown, Minnesota. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time, he had the speed to win that race. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. From his end zone, Marvin Mims. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work, and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills. The ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. A man who was lost for the year in week four last season. Here's Javante Williams. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still second down. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Now it's Wilson. 
And he'll find Sutton on the right side complete. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready. Each guy oh, tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked by Cameron Bynum, and his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. And I think this is a situation where a quarterback coach on the sideline is going to talk to a signal caller and say, listen, it's third and long, and it's still early in the game. Let's not force things here. If we don't feel good about it, let's just check something down and pump the football. Well, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Madison running left. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard, stop short of the 35. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback. They also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Here's Dobbs to throw. This one caught. It's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice game for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Now a throw here, hold in, and he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Dobbs throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And the Vikings are gonna have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven yard line. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there, and now they're looking at a first and goal. To throw is Dobbs. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they've turned up to the task and forced the incompletion. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Dobbs is throwing. dropped back at the 15 yard line multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game second goal last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football had to eat it and ended up on the ground big play coming here it's third and goal Now Dobbs. Over the middle, that's caught by Harry. A big play, but still not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. And that big game may just change the thought process here on fourth down. I think in the red zone, they might now consider going for it on fourth down. A field goal would make it a two-score game, but they're going to go aggressive. They're going to try this thing on fourth and goal. Now Dobbs. There's Hawkinson in the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Vikings' decision to go for it pays off with six points.
They've got to be thrilled on the road right now. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, and quickly trying to make it 14 to nothing. Yeah, and mentioned it already. On the road, to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start right, like that, on, obviously your line. confidence rises in a big way, and you're putting some doubt in their minds. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. 14, Broncos nothing. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. Charles, it's kind of gut check time. Look, I know it's early first quarter, just their second drive of the game, but they've already thrown the interception, given up the score. You're down double digits. they got to figure out something and pretty quickly here. No doubt about it. And when we look at that sideline, I'm sure you're observing the same thing I am. I don't like the body language at all. They look like they're in a state of stunned disbelief. So to me, we always talk about someone stepping up and making a big play. I think it would behoove them if multiple guys step up and make big plays right now. They need something positive to happen, and they need for it to happen now. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Maybe a good spot to take a shot here, second and a yard from the 34. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. There's Wilson to throw. His throw incomplete. Anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Now it's Wilson. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. So for this defense, a tall order ahead trying to defend against Russell Wilson. Charles, your keys for how they might go about keeping him in check? Well, before we even get to the keys, let's start with the problems he presents because he feels pressure so well. He's got a great sixth sense, maybe even a seventh and eighth. He knows where the pressure's coming from. He knows how to slide away from it, sometimes run away from it, and then he finds good throwing lanes to deliver downfield. So to me, it's that pressure inside, big, tall guys to make him try and throw over them and make his height work against him. Second down and six now. Now Wilson, he'll get this to his tight end, Troutman. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field. Was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. They come up with exactly one minute to go in this first quarter. They go play action with Wilson. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. D.J. Wadham got off his spot quickly and got to the quarterback. Well, if the goal is to get back into this game, the offense is certainly moving in the wrong direction. This is certainly a case where one team needs big splash plays right now, but unfortunately, it's the other team that's getting them. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Fourteen nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Now Wilson. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Adam Troutman from three yards out. And the Broncos have got it back to within a score. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads them right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Will Lutz on for the point after. And that one makes it 14-7. to seven. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. Now right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Play action, it's Dobbs. Completes it to the fullback hand. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. And despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. But looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Here's Dobbs to throw. And he's going to have the hook up here with Harry. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Dobbs. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. Not able to go anywhere that time, second down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve, and that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. 
Now a second and ten. Dobbs. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 45-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there that'll lead to a new set of downs. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. On first and 10, Dobbs. Catch is made by Harry. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag round on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. From the 38 now, here's second and three. Throwing here, Dobbs. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Back to throw Dobbs. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, Vikings! Alexander Madison with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Vikings go up by two touchdowns. Well, CD, that's his second touchdown already. And how about this offense? Three drives, three touchdowns. An absolute total team effort right now. And let's face it, I don't think he's done. We're still in the first half. There's a lot of time left to go. I don't know what they're going to do on the other side trying to slow him down. But right now, he's feeling it. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now 21-7. to Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And coming out now the Broncos. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do, so I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant, keep throwing it around. A gain of three, second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Williams going to get it again on second down. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Wilson. Big strides, look at him go. And past the 30 before he's out of bounds. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. 
They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Second down and six now from the 26. Here's Wilson. That's to the rookie, Marvin Mims. Well, they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. To throw is Wilson. Into the hands of his receiver, Humphrey. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. They go back to the ground with Williams. And the Broncos are going to be set up for the first and goal. It's a nice run there. Gets him down to the six-yard line. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. A carry for the fullback. This is Mike Burton. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. A good solid game there on first down, but the defense has to be happy. They didn't let it pop for anything bigger. From the two now, second and goal. Williams will take it in. Touchdown, Denver. Well, he put the work course on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. The Lutz will look to add the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This fielded right at the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Alexander Madison leading this Vikings offense out there to begin the next drive. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books, but it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that means he's getting plenty of blocking, 
A lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. Dobbs looking to throw on first down. They'll get this underneath to Madison. And down right around the 32-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs. And they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he stopped immediately there. Alex Singleton, a former Canadian League star, in on the stop. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 39. It's a gain of 22 as we tick towards the two-minute warning. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first-half highlights and analysis from a back-and-forth first half that we've seen. Dobbs throw here into the hands of Harry. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. On second down, Dobbs. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Baron Browning. From his outside linebacker spot, gets him down there for a loss of four. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth, both these offenses having their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Baron Browning, two plays in a row now that he has gotten in there for the sack, and it brings up fourth down. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Back deep for Denver, the rookie Marvin Mims. He'll send this away into the Rocky Mountain night, and it's a good one. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. That'll go down as just a 20-yard punt. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively or offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Possibly a good spot here to take a shot as they come out with three receivers to the left on second and less than a yard. Now Wilson. Open man complete to Humphrey. 
And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Final play of the half, it's Wilson. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Now Wilson, a final shot before break. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a running back, Alexander Madison, who put together a solid first half. He chipped in a couple of touchdown runs as he was running with determination right from the word go. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. It'll be the Broncos getting the football first in this second half as they trail, and we are back underway. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. Oh, some strong running. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Up the middle, it's Williams. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Third and nine here. From the shotgun, Wilson. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Give that sack to Harrison Phillips, the big man. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here's Riley Dixon now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. 
Yeah, both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there, couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, I'd say a couple people didn't get the read correct, huh? Zone coverage, linebacker dropped right into the proper spot. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. He was looking directly in his eyes as he threw the football, and you're right, it was telegraphed, probably should have been picked. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, Dobbs to throw. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Baron Browning in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. Well, this has to count as a great team effort today, but this man, he's been at the center of all of it. Really special day for any defense to have this many sacks in a game even more so for this player. One of the best individual efforts of the season. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Baron Browning make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This is caught by Addison. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. They'll get 19 out of this, but it will still bring up the fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. On fourth down, Dobbs. Incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop, it's a big momentum play. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their 36-yard line. He'll hand this to Williams to start things out. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Williams going to get it again on second down. A little joke. 60 yards rushing forward to the ball game now on 14 carries. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. On first and ten, it's Wilson. For the left side, it's complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 
That's good for 28 yards. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now it's Wilson. Open man left side. It's a tight end man hurts. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's a whole short of defense. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. The busy night continues for Williams. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Javante Williams with his second touchdown of the night. And the Broncos are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Nice execution there. Good job by the O-line getting him in for the second time. And you always have to start with credit there when you're having a big game. I mean, you don't get there by yourself. That's rare. But how about the ability to see the proper holes, pick the proper place to go, and find his way into the end zone? Lux with the extra point, and we are tied at 21. So the drive there took six plays, and it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. Teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kicks away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 67 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Partner, we always talk about how important third down is. But I think first down is equally important because everything comes off of that play. If the defense wins the down, they are able to attack. If the offense wins the down, they might go faster, do other things, and change things up. That big play right there allows this offense to really get in gear. Dancing to his left. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Dobbs. They'll get five out of the scramble and hit second down. I sort of like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. From the 47, it's second and five. Out of the gun, Dobbs. And that is incomplete. 
force Barron down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 30. A nice pickup of 17 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Dobbs to throw. Catch is made by Harry. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 17 more yards. They had 17 on the previous snap as well. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll make it second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. To throw his downs. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And they're going to drop him well shy of the first as he can only make it to the 11. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? The kick by Joseph is good. And with it, they'll take the lead at 24-21. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no wind, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. Joseph now to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The offense getting set again. We spotlight Javante Williams, the running back. He is hoping to find the end zone for a third time, and we sit now in the third quarter. And nothing would excite him more, but I think even more so his offensive line. Anytime you've got a guy scoring that many times, that means you've done a really nice job in front of him. You're always giving props to the big fellas up front. It's always a good idea. Those <laughs> are some massive men. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Wilson's throw taken in by Sutton. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slam. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now a handoff. Here's Williams to about the 40-yard line. 
Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Williams going to get it again on second down. That's a run to run now. And they get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 96 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's going on. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 36. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. And a solid run down inside the 30. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. From the 29, here's second down and three. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. A nice little juke. And down inside the 15 he goes. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a level shy of the first down marker. They'll get five out of the scramble, hit second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Wilson now off the bootleg. And he's got it. And well, the Broncos are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown, and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Wilson. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Marvin Mims, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Broncos have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. This has definitely been a back-and-forth affair, and now they have the lead here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and they gave up the field goal on that last drive, as we remember, but it felt like their offense told them, don't worry about it, we've got your backs. We'll come back with a touchdown of our own, and they did. Lutz good on the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. That time, a nine-play drive, and it ends with a Denver touchdown. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one.
On first and ten, Dobbs. Flushed out right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble. And it's second down. the play fake. Here's Dobbs. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Back to throw Dobbs. Pass caught here by Osborne. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Dobbs looking to throw on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. In the early days of the NFL, you could easily blame these drops on maybe some uneven or uncertain lighting in the stadium. Not anymore. The lights are pretty good. Yeah, they're great here at night, but his second drop indeed. Not a good look. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Dobbs to throw. This goes out wide for Madison. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. As a defense, you're more bound to your zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. The Vikings on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and nine. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 43. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Now a throw out to his fullback is complete. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. But plays like that, Charles, no doubt, they're just going to continue to fuel this crowd. And this defense is already playing well but it also feeds on the energy of that crowd that you're talking about, and that takes them up to another level. Right now, they're playing really loose. They got the lead, and what a nice stop they just made there behind the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Dobbs is throwing. And the Broncos get there and take him down. There we go. Loss of eight on the sack. And it's going to lead him to fourth down. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Denver Broncos back out there. Former Tar Heel Javante Williams. We shine the spotlight on him. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back 
just got to have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. They'll start with the option. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. On second down, Williams. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Here's third and seven. Now it's Wilson. Screenplay set up for Williams. And I don't think he got there. No. He's short by maybe a foot. Maybe. Call it fourth and inches. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. Here's Powell on the return. It'll be a 39-yard punt four on the return. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 77 yards here for Madison. He's got a first down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Throwing here, Dobbs. Over the middle, that's caught by Harry. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos 30. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to save every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Now Dobbs. On oh, the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely pulled down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Dobbs. And yeah, this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down, right near the 24. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. 
This one an absolute must. It's fourth and four. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Well, they did the part they had to do. Quick throw got the first down. But that doesn't allow them to relax. They still have plenty of work to do. Now first and goal. Back to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And, partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this win away. Joseph connects on the extra point. So it's now a three-point game here in the closing stages as a field goal now can only tie it. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So here is Wilson and the Broncos. Down 31-28, 53 ticks to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now Wilson. Able to find Judy. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and ten now. Throwing now is Wilson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Sutton. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Here's first and ten. Here's Wilson. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here's second down. Wilson to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10 yard line. A huge play there. Now, do you use that timeout or try to hustle it up? Here we go. First and goal. Back to throw. 
And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. Charles, that drive was perfect. Methodical, executed so well, and they grabbed that lead with almost no time left for a last gasp from the other side. No way you could have drawn up a better final drive because not only did they keep their eyes on the end zone, they made sure they bled the clock out as well and denied their opponent a chance to respond. That's just terrific situational football to end this one. Lux with the extra point, and it would appear barring some late heroics. They're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And running with power here. Well, they had one final chance on the kick return, but no chance on the other side that they were going to let him navigate all the way to the end zone, Charles. And that ends up being the final play in this one. Yeah, you're right about that. Special teams coaches, they spend a lot of time working on these types of situations, and they go over every crazy possibility that can happen in this situation. They were able to cover successfully and end the game. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Broncos are winners, as we say so long from Denver.